In this video, I'm going to show you how to replicate a system using the Christie Virtual Appliance and Clone Manager software. For this demonstration, I'll be replicating a Windows machine to a vSphere environment. The first thing you'll want to do is deploy the Clone Manager agent to the machine you wish to replicate. This can be done through the Estate Management tab. Press Deploy Software and you can enter the IP address, username and password of the system you wish to deploy to. From here you can also deploy any of our other Christie products. Once the client is installed you should see it in this list of installed systems here. I'm going to be replicating to a vSphere hypervisor and I'm going to be using the VA's automatic VM creation features to take a lot of the work out for me. We currently support Amazon EC2, Microsoft Hyper-V, Oracle Cloud and VMware vSphere for our full automatic integration. You can also recover to other hypervisors that are not on this list, but there will be a few more manual steps involved. For those systems, you would need to manually create the virtual machine that will be your replication target and boot the Christie replication ISO file. You will then be able to replicate directly to that environment. To add a vSphere environment, you simply need to add the IP address and username and password for an account that has administrative rights to the vSphere environment. You will then see it in your list of configured hypervisors as shown here. Opening up the replication tab, I can create a new replication job. I'll select my contract and I'll select the frequency. So here we will select a frequency of which we would like to run the periodic syncs after the completion of the clone. We will run a full and complete clone of the system first and then sync across any changes on the schedule determined here. You will create one schedule per replication job and each replication job can hold as many replication tasks as you like for as many machines as you like. I'm going to have this replicate changes across hourly every one hour starting at five o'clock. I can now add a replication to this job. I can select my source machine, which I've just deployed the software to from the estate tab. The credentials are already pre-populated for me. And now I'll select my target. So as you can see, I can see my vSphere and my Oracle Cloud hypervisors. And I also have an option for show discovered targets. This is what I would press if I was replicating to a hypervisor other than vSphere, Hyper-V, Amazon EC2 or Oracle Cloud. If you press show discovered systems, you can see all of the machines in your environment that are currently booted into the Windows replication environment. You could pick any one of these systems that you wish to replicate to and begin the replication. But I'm going to select my vSphere environment to take advantage of the automatic VM creation. I'll open up my settings button here to tweak how the virtual machine will be created and how the clone will run. I can choose if I wish to replicate all of the disks or perhaps just one disk or perhaps one volume in one disk. I can include or exclude whichever disks or volumes that I like and the same is said for Linux with its volume groups, logical volumes and file systems. In the hypervisor configuration tab, I can see the defaults that I have set for my hypervisor and I can change these on a per machine basis. I can specify the data center, the host and the VM data store that will be used to create the new replication target. I also have some other options here. The VM name I can change. I can specify the amount of RAM and CPU count this new target will have, which by default will be pre-populated with the details retrieved from your original system. 
If your original system had 4GB of memory, by default the target machine will also be created with 4GB of memory, but this can be changed to increase or decrease as you wish. You can also increase or decrease the size of the disks. We can replicate to a system with larger disks than the original or smaller, as long as the data fits upon the new size disk. I can also change the host name and or IP address, subnet mask, gateway and DNS server of this new target machine once the replication has finished. In the advanced configuration tab, I can specify some additional options such as pre and post replication scripting, where I can supply scripts to run before and after each replication. I can also choose to enable my snapshot feature, which will create snapshots of the replicated system on a frequency that I specify. This will allow you some protection against replicating across any unwanted changes from the original system to the target system, for example, malware. With this enabled, I can jump back to any snapshot I've created using this feature. Now that the machine has been added to my replication job, I can either wait for it to start automatically on the schedule that I have determined, or I can press run now to start the replication immediately. Now the replication job is initializing. First, the new target VM will be created on the hypervisor that I've specified, along with the disks, network adapters and such and then that system will be booted into the Christie replication ISO file. Once that has then been brought online and is connected to the network, we can begin the format and partition phase, where we will format and partition the disks to match that of the original system, and then we will perform a full clone of the data from the source system to the target system. Once that is complete, we will then continue to sync across any changes that have been made to the source system on the predetermined schedule. You can also manually trigger a sync by pressing the run now button at any point. Now that the replication is successful, the target system will remain in the Christie replication environment and continue to sync on the schedule that we've determined. I could, if I like to, press run now to manually trigger a sync, or when I'm satisfied with my replication and I wish to cut over to the new machine, I can press the reboot button. This will shut down the target VM, suspend the job so no more syncs will run, and bring the new target system online into the replicated operating system. This process is exactly the same for Linux systems as well as Windows, so there's only one process to learn. The process is also the same for all of our supported integrated hypervisors, with a few caveats when it comes to the options that you select for the creation of the VM. For example, ESXi will use data stores, which will be called something different in the other hypervisors. The process is also largely the same when replicating to another target hypervisor outside of our integration list, or when replicating to a physical target. All that you need to do is create the virtual machine yourself for the target, or in the occasion that you're replicating to a physical system, simply boot the replication ISO file, and then proceed through the replication as shown.